In this session, we're going to have a look at the structure of relational database management systems. This is an introductory lecture just to get our heads around what databases do and why do we have them. What do databases do? Databases have the ability to store a large amount of data. So when we do a Google search on the internet, it finds all the URLs that meet the criteria. So if I'm looking for a particular subject, I type that in and go search. That's actually talking to a database. Twitter, all messages are stored in an index by hashtags. And so every time a tweet is sent, it's been able to be stored in a database, allows them to search for information with particular hashtags or ads. Photo bucket, you're able to upload images to the internet and have them linked to your account and other people can access those images as well. And also you've got other programs such as Facebook, Messengers, a lot of Google products are built upon a database. Databases are required to store large amounts of information quickly. So all the information that has been streaming across the internet, um, there are databases out there collecting that information. Well, what are they actually collecting? Well, they're actually collecting data. And data is the most important part of a database. So it's the individual bit of data that they are storing and trying to index for future retrieval. So the function of a database is store data to allow efficient and effective retrieval of information down the track. So this allows us to query the database to find out which students are in year nine this year or what students are in year 12 this year. So when we look at data versus information, here is a list of numbers. At the moment, this, this list of numbers is actually just straight data. We don't know exactly what it's for, but we know it's the same data length and it contains only numbers. But if we apply some meaning to that, such as account numbers for a client, we now see that that data now becomes information, that we know that this list of numbers is for a particular client. Or they're file numbers in a warehouse where we can retrieve documents from a warehouse. So this list of numbers go on from being data to information. And this is because we've actually given data meaning. And once we give data meaning, it becomes information and becomes useful. So therefore, collecting a whole lot of bits of data and allowing to search that at a later stage allows that data to become information. So when we're looking for a particular topic, such as um, jet skis, we can type that into Google. It will search for any website that has jet skis and then result those as quickly as possible in under a second. Now, with data, we need to normalize the data. So the following contains multiple categories of data. So we've got 123 Downtown Street, Budgeon, Queensland, 4556. Now this is a complex bit of data. But when we start looking at the data, we can actually see it needs to be broken down into fields or categories to help a database store this. Because when they're complex strings, it requires a lot of processing power for the computer to sort that information out. And by breaking it down into fields, it allows for quick retrieval. So how do we break it down into fields? Well, we identify all the little bits of information that are in this one complex bit of data. And once we've done that, we can then categorize this and break it into individual parts, such as house number, street name, the street type, the suburb, the state, the postcode. So this allows a database to easily search now for things such as street name. If we're looking for a crescent or um, if they're on a road or a street, etc., or place, um, it makes it easier to search. Or if we're looking for particular postcodes, we could just type the number in. The database will know to look in postcodes to retrieve that piece of information rather than a complex piece of data. So normalizing data is very, very important for the efficiency of the database. But when we look at how that data is normalized and structured within a database, we need to understand how a database works. To me, it looks much the same as a spreadsheet, where you've got individual little bits of cells. And where a column and a row meets, we've actually got a piece of information or a piece of data. So in this case, here it is Jane. And we can give the column, which is known as fields, a field name. So in this case here, first name. So Jane is first name. So rather than being a piece of data, because we've given the field name a name such as first names, we now give that piece of data context and it becomes information. So therefore this piece of data here, first name is Ed. So this must be for someone's first name. So in the third column where we've got Smithers, this is last name. So we've actually given the piece of data some contextual meaning, turning it into information. 
So columns or fields allow us to categorize data into particular types. The rows that go across are known as records. And this shows information about one particular entity within that table or in that data set. So in this case here, we've got 101, the employee ID, and this is for Ed Smithers, and he's in title, he's in sales, and he's got his date of birth, and we've got address ID. So this information all through here belongs to employee 1010, who is Ed Smithers. So this information across here belongs to employee 1008, which is Jane Smith. So you can see that a record is all about one person. So this could be a student, it could be about a vehicle, it could be about a menu item. All those sorts of things will help you understand that a record is about one topic. So records are broken down into fields. Fields contain pieces of data for that particular record. Now, records and fields, or the data are stored in fields which are stored in records, and records are stored within a table or a file. And this is how a database stores information about one category. So in this case here, it's about employees. So you could actually have um, another table for classes. So you can have a table for employees or teachers, one for students, one for classes, and a relational database management system helps bring all those together. When we look at the structure and access, we'll see that the table is stored as an employees. You can see the last name, first name, phone number. So once again, the records go across, the fields go down, and the table name is held at the top. Remember the table needs to be all about one particular entity or one particular subject. So we would have a table for employees, we would have a, another table for subjects, we could have another table for students. We don't want to mix those together as it becomes inefficient when we're searching for data. So when we have multiple tables, that helps us create a relational database management system where tables can be linked together and share information so when we're looking at producing a student's timetable, we can query the student to find out what subjects they're in, to find out what teachers they have, and then what room allocation that subject's been given. So the role of the database is to effectively organize the data for quick and speedy data retrieval. We need to normalize the data to ensure that it's stored efficiently, as this improves the user experience at the end.